This is Viewpoint with Chris Pierce. Today's program has been underwritten by Body Auto Real Estate, providing personal and professional real estate service since 1987. For all your real estate needs, call Diane Body Auto at 402-690-4769. Linda McDermott with Fricky & Associates is an independent insurance representative helping you with personal and business insurance as well as your long-term care, life, health, and retirement needs. Come join the conversation at politicalinsidersreport.com, Nebraska's source for local politics. And now, here's our host, Chris Pierce. And welcome to Viewpoint with Chris Pierce. I'm your host, Chris Pierce. I'm glad to be back with you. Again, we're here at the Milton Abrahams Public Library on 90th and Fort. Great facility. Make sure you go out and uh, check out your local uh, libraries. Uh, this one was just uh, uh, remodeled just a few years ago. It looks great. Today, we're going to be talking about a hot topic that's been going around in the news from, uh, uh, from all over the world. Uh, and we're going to be talking about a citizen's right to privacy versus the government's need to have surveillance. Uh, with us today, we have three great guests. Uh, first of all, we have Becky Brenner. She is the executive director of the a Nebraska ACLU. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Levi Lippincott. He is the chairman of the Republican Party in Sarpy County. And Paul Wojcicki. He is a talk, show, uh, talk radio show host on uh, COIL Radio here in Omaha. I'm glad to have all three of you guys Thank here. You. Um, I will tell everybody that one of the things we wanted to do with the show is, is find people from a broad spectrum uh, uh, of this issue. And we're going to find out today just how difficult that really is. Uh, but what I wanted to start out with, uh, Becky, and that's why I've got you here, I want to talk about a citizen's right to privacy. Mm -hmm. um, there really is no right to privacy, or is there? There's, if you look at the Constitution, there's different structures in terms of what we have a right to. And one of them is we have a right to be able to assemble. We have a right to be able to express ourselves. We have a right to be able to know that if we're going to be arrested, we have to have a warrant. So for a right to privacy, it is not expressly in the Constitution. But don't some people quote the 14th Amendment right, as, right, right. as that right? Right, and I brought the Constitution. Why, why don't you tell us what the 14th Amendment for those it that says, don't It says, no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of the law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the law. And so that is one of the things that um, due process is extremely important as we look at um, exposure of private information as it relates to individuals. But Levi, isn't, doesn't the government say, you know, we have these new FISA courts, and actually they're not really that new. No. I think they were actually approved in, I want to think, 1975, mm -hmm. uh, when Correct. the FISA court was created. Mm -hmm. So the government says, well, we do do process. We have the FISA court. So is that enough? No, it's not enough. I mean, you, you, from my understanding, Congress is briefed on what the FISA court rules, but from my understanding, the public is never made aware That's of true. any sort of ruling. And uh, I believe a congressman just introduced a bill to actually provide summaries of their rulings. They don't have to give out all the classified information, but at least they're giving summary points of what the judgments were, so that way it's no longer as secret as it once was. Now, Paul, Paul one of the great reasons why I wanted you here, you and I have something in common. We're both veterans. Uh, you have 20 years in the service. I didn't have quite that many. But you know, one of the reasons why the government says that we've had to expand what we do and how we do is because of terrorism. Sure. Um, but the NSA, which is who we're really talking about when we say government, is actually explicitly prohibited from monitoring Americans. And, and if, I, if I read correctly, that includes Americans that are abroad. So, you know, that military background, that, that, that urge to serve and defend our country, isn't that a good enough reason that if, if what they do saves one American life from a terrorist attack. Is that something we should swallow? I, I say no. I'm torn on this issue, and, and I'll tell you why. Because on one hand, I think it's a good idea to have something that does protect American lives. And if there was a way for the government to be able to collect that data and have integrity in the system, I may be OK with it. The problem is with any government organization or program, there never ends up being integrity in the system. 
uh, look what's going on with the IRS. It's supposed to have a lot of integrity and no one can get your files, but that's not what's happening. Same thing here, and we don't know how bad or how much information the NSA is really collecting. We're on the tip of the iceberg. Two years from now, this thing could be just enormous. And the other thing I'd like to come back to, what Levi was talking about with the FISA court, what bothers me about it is, in any warrant during due process, the, at some point the defendant gets to go in front of a judge and say, you know, the, the, the information that the prosecutors used or the police used to, to get the probable, or the probable cause to get the warrant, they have a right to go in and quash that evidence. The FISA court, there is, there's only one side. It's the government saying we need this, and I believe there's been about 1,100 mm -hmm. times they've gone to the FISA court. The FISA court said yes, all but one, and the FISA court just needed clarification, and eventually that one got approved. I think what needs to happen is they need to have an ombudsman even, somebody that's there to represent the people, have them be appointed by the Congress, something, somebody that can go in front of the FISA court and say, hold on a minute, what about the 14th Amendment or the 5th Amendment? Now, Becky, you know, let me, let me, I want to talk a little bit about the ACO that you sure. represent. Um, there's a lot of, I would, I would think, misinformation about what the ACLU does. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I have a lot of Republican friends, I have a lot of Democrats, I have a lot of Libertarian friends who think the ACLU is just there to quash anything, you know, the ACLU is about letting people do whatever they want. But really, there's a stance that the ACO just recently took that really is kind of opposite to that. Can you talk a little bit about that? I know that you're not intimately about because that's more the national, but the, the lawsuit and, and just challenging some of this stuff. You know, it's, it's surprising. Um, I've been with the ACLU now for a year, and we get probably 25 phone calls a day from people who need our help. And a lot of times the phone calls will start out with, I don't believe in the ACLU, but I need you to help me. Which okay, is, which, which is, is a great motivation tool for you. <laughs> truly, it, you know, that's what, how they start the conversation is, I don't like you, but I need your help. Mm -hmm. And um, it's bullying in schools. It's racial profiling at a, at a stop for um, an infraction. It's someone in the, uh, the judicial system who feels like they're not being heard. It's an inmate that's not getting his medication. So we're there to protect everybody's civil liberties. And that's our core guiding principle is the Constitution. And there are some things that we do take on that are controversial. I mean, we take on Westboro Baptist Church right to protest. Um, you know, we take on free speech. And sometimes we don't like the speech, mm -hmm. but um, we have to protect the people's right to have free speech, even though we find it, you know, um, absolutely awful. So, you know, and I think to get back to, I mean, the ACLU is there to, to help anybody who needs help. And we do that every single day. We will sue a government agency. We will sue the governor. We will sue the police department. When there has been a plaintiff that comes forward and says something has happened to us that we look at, my legal team looks at, we take it to a legal panel made up of lawyers in Omaha and Lincoln, and they say, you know what? You need to proceed with this. So um, it's every day is an adventure, and it's it's really um, it's inspiring to know that you're really helping people. So Levi, we've got about a minute till we go to our first break. You, I think you consider yourself more of a libertarian Republican, correct? Yes. Now you are. L correct me if I'm wrong. Libertarians are about you know what government get out of my business. Correct. I mean it's it's there shouldn't be. The, you know, uh, uh, there should be the Department of Education. There's a lot of things. So in an instant, aren't you agreeing with the ACLU right now in the fact that the government should get out of my personal business, should not be looking at my phone records, should not be reading my, should not be tracking the library books, and we're in the library, that I, that I read. Yeah. I, so there's, that, that's, mm -hmm. that's a, a strange bedfellow here, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that's, that's kind of, the, for, the, for the small L libertarians or even the big L libertarians, you know, they... I mean, they always find themselves in strange bedfellows. I mean, sometimes you get your side with the ACLU, sometimes you're side with Democrats, sometimes you're side with Republicans. I mean, it's just, it all depends on where they're talking from. Yeah, right. And, yeah. and, and the ACLU yeah. is nonpartisan. Well, and the ACLU, from my understanding, is about, well, let's look at the situation. 
and whether it's good or not. So when we come back, we're going to get a little bit more into the effects of what happens and uh, when Americans find out that they're under investigation. We'll talk a little bit about the Patriot Act, which really kind of created the increase and the fact that this is not a new thing when we come right back. For 45 years, Family Housing Advisory Services has been improving quality of life by helping people achieve housing and financial stability. FAS prevents homelessness, educates homeowners, provides foreclosure prevention options, develops financially wise consumers, offers affordable mortgage lending options, eliminates housing discrimination, and reduces poverty. Programs and services include home buyer education, tenant services, financial management, tax assistance, homeowner finance, and fair housing. For more information, call 402-934-7921. And welcome back to Viewpoint with Chris Pierce. Uh, we are here at the Mar uh, Milton Abrahams Library at 9th and Fort, and we're sitting here with Becky Brenner. She's the uh, executive director for the AF Nebraska ACLU. We have Levi Lippincott. He is the chair of the Sarpy County Democrats, and Paul. Oops, Republicans. <gasps> yeah. Oh, it's okay. I love Republicans. I, I, we uh, love Republicans. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I've had more Republicans on my show than I've had Democrats, so <laughs> I'm doing okay. And we don't want to forget about Paul Van. Van Wojcicki. Wojcicki. I've been practicing his name all afternoon. I knew I was going to screw it up. Uh, and he's a local talk radio host on Coil Radio. Paul, I want to get back to you. We, we, we've talked about kind of the overall effect, but we, do, you know, we, we mentioned earlier that uh, the NSA was actually created in 19... 52 by Truman, I believe, uh, and then the Liza Court was created in 75. And right after that, started some hearings about. It, it seemed like almost immediately when the Pfizer Court was created, we started investigating uh, uh, American citizens in the country when we shouldn't have. So, ha do you think that this has been, you know, and that goes back to 1975 uh, and probably even earlier? Do you think it's been uh, a fiasco from the beginning, or? Or was that a few cases, it kind of calmed down, and then since 9-11, we've just exploded? Where, where do you think we've been at? I think since 9-11, it has really changed the playing field. Uh, what you have right now is just a whole series of things happening all at once. You know, people knew what the Patriot Act was, kind of, but not really. Most people never heard of the FISA court until probably just a couple of years ago. Um, my worry with all this, however, is at least from the people that call into local radio shows, is one, they feel helpless. They, they feel like, could my name be on this, on this list? Am I being investigated or not? And if not, how do I find or how do I find out? And then what? What is my recourse? And, and the dangerous part of this is you have not only the, the, the IRS scandal, you have, of course, this, you've got the, the government that was wiretapping probably the most egregious is wiretapping the media. Yeah. So in, in the mentality of the general public is, is what is next, what don't we know? And we, we they feel helpless. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you create that pool, who knows what's going to happen politically or otherwise? I mean, could people start rioting in the streets? I, I don't think so, but you don't know. It's, it's really a dangerous scenario if you think about it. You know, Levi, what's really interesting, we found in our research, three days after 9-11 happened, Three days. Uh, President Bush signed an order allowing the NSA to do domestic spying. Now, it, let, let me go. Let me go back in my memory because I know. I think we all know where we were when 9/11 happened. At first, we th we instantly knew it was foreign terrorists. I mean, there was no doubt. You know, and within three days, in fact, we knew it was Saudis because we we were able to find the manifest, things like that. So, given that, why did suddenly three days after the towers go down? we start spying on Americans domestically. What, I mean, how, where do you think his thought process was? I, I mean, unless he was thinking that there was some sort of sleeper cell or sleeper organization within the states that was helping the, the, the Saudis get on the planes, I don't understand why you would immediately jump to, oh, this is a reason to spy on American citizens. Yeah, and, 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 and I think you really have to look farther back. Okay. That is not when we started spying on American citizens. So, so when did we start? I mean, you can go back to the civil rights movement. It's true. J. Edgar Hoover, uh, he was taping Martin Luther King. I mean, we can go back farther and farther and farther. McCarthy. Where there was, you know, horrible examples of, of 
um, spy organizations or the federal government or the FBI, reading people's mail, listening on their phone calls, monitoring hotel rooms. I mean, we know for a fact that that was being done in the civil rights movement. So this didn't start with 9-11. Okay. It's certainly come to the forefront after 9-11. And I think you're right with, I mean, one of the things that I've noticed is, is with this release of um, The Guardian and the mm -hmm. news in terms of the records and Verizon um, in, in particular was that it was their business customers. And I look at our ACLU national office in New York City. We are Verizon customers and we are a business customer. And so when I think about the NSA having access to every single phone in the national headquarters of the ACLU, to know who you're calling and where you're calling and at what time you called is very alarming for me as, as someone who you know embraces the ability to know that what I'm doing is private. If I, if I choose to go to a rally for some type of a um, movement that you might not agree with, mm -hmm. nobody needs to know that. But you, know, you, you mentioned Verizon Wireless and, mm -hmm. and what was recently disclosed. Mm -hmm. But if you go back to late 2002, that's when uh, telecommunications companies started what's called right. bulk metadata. Right, metadata. Data. Metadata. Yes, sir. Say that fast three times. If I can't say Paul's <laughs> last name, I'm not going to be able to say metadata. Uh, oh, I just did. There so, you, go. you know, and and all of them except for one was actually cooperating right. without question. Right. Um, and they were held harmless. Exactly. Until I think it was uh, someone within AT and T that kind of spilled the beans, and that's when. But really. You know, there was a bit of a bluster about that, but then it just died down. Mm -hmm. Is do you, do you think that's still going on? Mm -hmm. And Verizon got caught again? Yes, I do. Okay, so Levi, given that, what's the end? I mean, what's the end? Is because uh, think about all the things that we give our personal information for. Yeah. Uh, th I mean, think about the. Uh, uh, Baker card or you know the little cards that you get that track our purchases mm -hmm. I mean we're told that well we track them so that you know we could you know you get these weird mailers because it's based on what your purchasing history sure. has been but I got a bad feeling that's not the only reason and it's not the only way it's been used. I can remember a few years ago there was a big thing about data selling where companies would just sell their big huge uh, bag of information just to just anybody. Yep. So do you think that maybe the government has all that information as well? I mean, it's certainly possible. I mean, if the telephone companies and the internet companies and, I mean, Google says that they weren't complicit in it, but you don't ever know. I mean, we don't have access to the court records. So, mm -hmm. you know, true. You, you don't know where the information's at and how much they actually have. That's what's actually so terrifying about it because a lot of these companies, you know, Google, Facebook, whatever, you're voluntarily entering into your agreement to share that data with those, with those people, knowing sometimes they may sell it, sometimes they may not. You know, if you read the terms of service, like, one of my friends does. I mean, that's. I mean, that's one of the things I do. I don't really care if I'm going to be. If I'm going to take part in that world, I know that my information is going to be. You know, good. and Paul, I just got in the mail. I think just a few days ago from my student loan uh, company that had a change in privacy policy. And I've, I can remember getting those from. I get those from just about anybody. But I'm wondering. Uh, if you don't sign off, you actually, if you don't do any, an inaction is approval, correct? Mm -hmm. So how many people do we think don't do anything, they just throw that away? I would say probably very comfortably 99.9%. <laughs> I get them and they go right in the trash. But because again... And, and they're meeting the new law. There's, I mean, that's, that came out, I think, five, six years ago, that they had to then, you know, notify membership or something if there was a change and, you know, send the stuff out, but well, no one pays get, attention you, to it. You get the notification. And you read it, and one, you can't read it unless you know you're a Georgetown lawyer. Secondly, is what are the alternatives? What if you d disagree with something? Your only alternative that is is to cancel the agreement. But a lot of times, in the case of a student loan, do you have the money to pay it off immediately? You don't. So you still are mm -hmm. ostensibly obligated to follow the terms. It's just a matter of a notification. Right. And it, it sort of can go into another show about credit card contracts, but we won't go there. Well, and it's <laughs> like your medical records. You know, every time you go to your doctor, you, you're given the HIPAA privacy statement mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, who can have access to your medical records. Mm -hmm. Now, anybody who's covered under an insurance plan knows automatically the minute you enroll with your insurance company, they have access to your records. Say that one more time. I think that's important to know. 
when you are insured by your insurance mm -hmm. company and they are your payer, they have access to your data in terms of your medical records because they need to know that in order to pay your bill. So they know that you've gone to the doctor on May 9th and your diagnosis was hypertension and these were the medicines that you were given because they're paying the bill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they have access to that and you gave them permission when you signed up with when that. When you signed for the policy. When you signed up with the policy, you gave them permission. So as, as an insurance company, I have access to all of your medical information. Now, I don't share that with anybody, but I have access to it. Interesting. And you, and you don't share it with somebody, but a hacker certainly Absolutely. will. Absolutely. Well, and that's become more and more common. I mean, we're talking Facebook has been hacked. Uh, I don't know how many times my email, whether it be Yahoo, Gmail, or whatever, you know, people say, you just sent me a, you know, a virus. I'm like, I haven't sent an email from my Yahoo. I have a Yahoo account that I've had. 14 years. Mm -hmm. I haven't sent anything from that Yahoo account probably in about 10, but yet people get things from my Yahoo account. So yeah, and and that's something that I want to hit on uh, when we come back from a break is 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 the ease of technology nowadays. If you think about the last 30 years, we have jumped in technology in the last 30 years more than we have in human history. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to talk about how that's affected that and how far behind Constitution laws and all those kinds of things are behind given what we do in technology. So when we come back we're going to get into that and then we're going to get a little bit into what's happening right here in our own backyard here in Nebraska. So we'll be right back. My son the Cub Scout helped raise money to make camping safer. My son the Cub Scout stood up to the school bully. My son the Cub Scout volunteers at the homeless shelter. My sons, the Boy Scouts, help clean up after the devastating flood. My son, the Eagle Scout, helped save a man's life. My sons, the Eagle Scouts, are defending our nation. My son, the Eagle Scout, became a doctor, civil engineer, police chief, wonderful husband and father, state senator, Join scouting 2012org And welcome back to Viewpoint with Chris Pierce. I'm your host, Chris Pierce, and we are talking about the citizen's right to privacy versus the, the, the need of government to protect us from terrorism, perhaps, uh, or just collect our information to sell us uh, used cars, uh, one way or another. Um, we ended uh, talking about, uh, we started talking a little bit about technology. I want to expand on that because I think, and it's not just this issue, that it seems that our Constitution, our laws are so out of date. I mean, we can go back to, whether it be gun control. I mean, the founding fathers never could think of a, we did on our show, a nine millimeter with a 100 round drum clip. I mean, they could never fathom that. So, so you know, Becky, how can we as a society keep up with this ever-changing technological beats and bounds that we do, which is great. It's made life much easier for us. Uh, it, it's made the quality of life better, but it's got some downsides to it, doesn't it? Well, and, and I think viewpoint is a great way to do this. Well, thank you. I know. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's educating the public about what's really going on. We can no longer just sit by and let things happen anymore. We really need to be vested in our government, the actions it's taking. We need to vote. I mean, what's critical is, is voting. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of us here have elected people who have gone in to government and who pass these laws mm -hmm. and maybe not defend our right to be able to know that we've got secure and, and private information about ourselves. So we have an obligation as citizens in Nebraska and in this country to be really aware of what's going on. And I think you're right, we have not kept up. And, it, and the FISA court, when it was started, is a clear example of what went on with the FBI and Hoover and why did we need a FISA court and why did we need the ability to do all of this. It kind of morphed into this, this creation and the reauthorization of the Patriot Act expanded the sections and you know it was started with uh, section 215 grew to allow the metadata mm -hmm. collection first it was we're only going to allow foreign communication mm -hmm. so that was the first one it was going to be you know if you're calling Saudi Arabia, we have a right to be able to figure out who you're calling and how long you're on the call and who's on the other end of that phone conversation. But don't you think, given what we've had to go through, 
the 9-11. Uh, the majority of those were Saudi. Absolutely. Do you think, do you feel in that instance that's acceptable? I feel as long as there is a judicial process in terms of probable cause of why you need to know that information. But that doesn't, but that doesn't happen in the FISA court, wouldn't you no. agree? Yep. It doesn't I mean, the FISA court, because the FISA court, really, there is no defense. And that's what we are suing them for. Okay. And what, what the, I think the issue is, is that the reauthorization now allows internal review of American citizens to each other. And this is the new wrinkle in this, mm -hmm. is that it's no longer that I'm calling Saudi Arabia, it's that I'm calling Chicago, Illinois, or I'm calling, you know, Lincoln. You know, that's all going into that big, huge hopper of information. So, Levi, let me ask you this. Do you think that the Founding Fathers purposely did not put in the Constitution the language, the right to privacy? I mean, do you think they had forethought that <coughs> maybe there are things that we can't fathom? Because really, if, if you think about it, given all the other rights that are very, very explicit, the right to speech, the right to assembly, the right to religion, very, very detailed, very explicit, but yet the right to privacy in my own home is really nowhere to be found. Um, it does say you can't come into my home. That's uh, right. Well, I mean, the Fourth Amendment says, can I use your cheat sheet right there? <laughs> Anybody would like them? Yeah. We have them at the ACLU Nebraska. The Fourth Amendment says the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable search and seizures shall not be vi violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause. So basically, it keeps going. So, so, but, so basically, what we've got here, we have two interpretations. You hear about the Constitution, Paul. We talk about there are people that interpret it as a literal document, but then we also <laughs> find people who say it's a living, breathing document. Yeah. And those two things cannot exist at the same time. Wouldn't sure. you agree? No, they can, and they do. Okay, how can it depends on your point of view. So if you have a certain point of view that, that uh, it's advantageous for you to have the living document, you're going to say that and vice versa. Yeah. Uh, it, and that's, that's what's on the political landscape in, in America today. But I will tell you, going back, we were talking about the FISA court and, and how things have changed. I think in 1975, and you said it's kind of a holdover, but there was a certain trust in the government. Mm -hmm. We trusted as a whole, as American society, we trusted government. Yeah, they did some bad things. Come fast forward today, there is no trust in the government. Mm -hmm. And you talk about uh, due process. Well, who adjudicates due process? Who makes that decision? Judges do. Well, guess who was on that list? Judges were being wiretapped. So the opportunity for blackmail, maybe that judge doesn't want something to be brought out. That's why I was talking about integrity in the system. There, there, so, so, Paul, so Paul, I answer, and, and, and feel free to jump in, guys, but, but you know, we talked about earlier that it, such a minuscule amount of requests to the FISA court have even been denied. Zero. Absolute zero? There was one that was sent back for I think it's clarification. Like no, it was 90. In fact, there was a report on Fox News a couple nights ago. One was actually, of the 1,100, one was sent back for clarification, and then that was resubmitted and was approved. So, why? I mean, if the judges are supposed to, in my opinion, the judges are supposed to represent the people. Because you have the government coming and saying, we want to do X. So, I would think the, the judges are supposed to be looking out for us, in, in essence. But yet, they seem to be just going along along for the ride. And in fact, we don't even know who these FISA judges are, do we? No, they're secret. Well, they're I mean, secret. And I mean, I, th I think one is perceived. Levi, but we won't say that. <laughs> Whether it's actual or perceived, it doesn't matter. The perception of the American people is there's no integrity. Okay. People are calling in the local radio show hosts. That's what they're saying. There's no integrity in the system. How do we know that one of those judges aren't being blackmailed? You see what I mean? It doesn't right. matter if it's real or not. It's out there now, and when we know there's military leaders and there's judges and politicians um, that are on that list, how do we know that uh, they weren't listening to Governor Romney's con communications? We, we don't, and that's the problem here. Well, right. Go ahead. And it, well, and it's also it's also it's in their own self-interest to keep approving these things. I mean, for all we know, they're threatened that they're going to get their court shut down and they're no longer going to get a job anymore. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, well, I mean, I have to approve this, otherwise I'm going to be out of a job. I mean, a lot of the stuff in the, I mean, a lot of the stuff in people in government is, is not self-serving because everybody does what's in their own best, perceived best interest, but you look, at, you look at the Supreme Court and a lot of their rulings, 
they side, if it's a state's issue versus a the versus the federal government, most time they're going to side with the federal government. By extension, they are a member of the federal government. It's in their own best interest to expand their because the FISA court is a federal court. Yes. Yes. So right. So they you know they're dictated by federal law or federal. Mm -hmm. and you, sometimes you don't even say law; you say guidelines now. I mean, yep. because there's law, but then there's guidelines on how to, uh, you know, we talked about a little bit earlier about uh, what just happened um, with the NSA. They had a four-page report that they used on their interpretation, yeah. uh, and then they removed it very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, what, 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 what do you, I mean, that, it was like, from what I understand, and, and we, we have it, we've read it, you know, the, they sort of interpret although they deny it, that they have been given the authority to do surveillance on Americans in the country, in, inside the United States. Well, there was a lot of, if, you, if anybody gets the opportunity to be able to read that, and I know they took it down, but if you, if you did, there were so many things that you could point to that were just not true. I mean, one of the statements they made in this was that Congress has had full disclosure about what's going on with the NSA. And I see these two shaking their heads no. And it's yeah. like, right there is like, no, they haven't. Um, and that they've, I mean, it, w it went on and on, and there were all these bullet points. Right, that right. They were, and that's why they took it down. It was like so obviously contrived mm -hmm. that you could pick out points of it and says no. And Congress was saying, we haven't been briefed on any of this kind of stuff so so during the break we talked about something I want to get into while we've got a little bit of time here in the segment is um, for a while there uh, the, the some of the programs had to be author reauthorized I think every 90 days uh, and then there was an incident where uh, Attorney General Ashcroft was sick and his deputy I think we, we just his name was Kumi Kumi uh, said wait a minute this is illegal uh, and what we find out from that, as, as we look at the history, Bush was relying on Ashcroft and the Justice Department when they said, yes, this is legal. Right. Their and interpretations they, of the law. Right. Yes. So isn't what the NSA, should the NSA be interpreting the law, making up their own, this is how we interpret this, or should someone else be doing that? Because that was their interpretation of how they were enforcing both the Patriot Act right. and uh, the, other, the other programs. It's strange bedfellows, I guess, is how you want to put it. You know, it's, it's the judicial system, the Department of Justice, and then you have the, admin, the executive branch of the government, and it's, it's kind of getting a little muddy in terms of who's watching who. And I think it's the, the saying that absolute power corrupts absolutely is a very, very obvious outcome in terms of allowing the federal government unlimited access to the data on its citizens. And I think we're going to see it progress as as you see it being debated about, well, we've prevented so many terrorist attacks by using this. But they don't tell you, could we have prevented those terrorist attacks by any other means? Mm -hmm. They're not telling you that. So it's fear, they use fear. We've, we've prevented 10 terrorist attacks, is what they said. Of course, since they didn't happen, we don't, we don't know if they were right. really could planned. You, could you have prevented it by any other way? So let's, when we come back, we're going to talk about, I know you and I had a discussion a couple days ago. There are actually some things here in Nebraska since 9-11, since the Department of Homeland Security was, was created, uh, that I think will be shocking to our viewers of what's going on in our own backyard. I think the, the more disclosure we have uh, and the more discussions we have, the better it could be. So we'll be right back. The Midwest Ovarian Cancer Association mission is to support women diagnosed with ovarian cancer, to educate the public about the disease, and to support research. Currently, most women diagnosed with ovarian cancer have advanced disease and require prolonged medical treatment. Our goal at MOCA is to see fewer women diagnosed in advanced stages and to assure all women the availability of support and access to information. Please support these efforts by liking us on Facebook. Uh, welcome back to Viewpoint with Chris Pierce. I'm your host, Chris Pierce, and we're here at the Abrams uh, Public Library. Make sure read. You got a whole summer, kids. And I know I've got. This is a Saturday morning show. I know there's kids watching us at 10:30 in the morning. Okay, maybe they're not. But you adults start reading too. Uh, we are going to switch things because uh, Becky and I had a conversation a couple of days ago, and she really opened my eyes. So I want. I, I, maybe I can open I the do eyes. That. Hey, sorry, open the eyes of Levi and Paul. Tell me some of the things that's going on here in Nebraska 
Uh, some of the very interesting things that's going on since 9-11, since the Homeland Security, since all this, I'm going to call it paranoia, but some people say it's precautionary. One of the things that we are doing is we're doing a uh, freedom of information request, a FOIA request, and we are asking all of the um, police, off police agencies, um, deputies, counties, what are you using the Homeland Security grant money to purchase? Now this is where they've applied for grant money from Homeland Security and what you're saying is okay, what are Nebraska you City, what do you need it what, for? What are you buying? Are you okay. buying 25 Uzis? <laughs> you know, are you buying a tank in your small town of 300 people? You know, what is it you're buying to uh, militarize your police department and it's going to be very interesting when we're done mm -hmm. to see you know what is being purchased by the homeland security money and i think everybody needs to know um, what your police department is buying uh, do you have a tank in wilbur nebraska and um, i know I'm not insulting Wilbur, but uh, so do you have a tank in Wilbur? What are you going to use your tank for? You know, do you have um, uh, drones that you've purchased in your community? And I think those are the kind of things that you need to bring up at your city council meetings as citizens, and that's what we talked about being um, informed for mm -hmm. what's going on. I think it's it's interesting to know that there are certain communities that have spent this money in somewhat questionable ways. Um, what, what spurred the Nebraska ACLU to start this? It's a national movement. It's a national movement. The okay. national ACLU is looking at every state to see what we've done in terms of um, well, militarizing me, our police departments. Well, let me, let me ask you this. I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm not a, a lefty by any means, but I'm thinking that if I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm a supporter of the police officers, and if they need something, whether they may not need it now, but they may need it sometime, why not let them have it? I'm, I'm, I'm an advocate. If the government just says, hey, take my money, if you don't ask for it, you're dumb. Hey, it's free money. Uh, I think, I, I, I guess I can, can agree it should be used responsibly, but who's to decide what's responsible use of that money? I mean, let me, let me ask you, Levi, if, if Sarpy County, if Papillion La Vista got a grant and they wanted, uh, let's say, uh, one of those barricade tanks that, that get that big thing in the front that they can knock down yeah. walls or whatever, why shouldn't they have that? I mean, they don't need it. We got a National Guard unit here in Omaha. They can call if they need some sort of backup like that. Okay, so they, now they need a barricade. Yeah, tank, but, but, but then now you're clearly saying clearly going to be outgunned, and that's not a police department. You're looking for a militia at that point in time, and we've got a militia. Okay, now let's let's call. not talk about the Second Amendment because we did that show, and it has militia <laughs> right in it. So they could say, "I'm just doing the constitutional thing," and we got a, our own militia. But uh, I guess you know, Paul. Let me let me maybe it's because I've got a military mind, maybe. I know you do too, but I'm thinking, I can remember, I was in tanks. I mean, I had M1A, m and a 2 so I like tanks personally. Uh, you but, brought up that horrible phrase, use it or lose it, that we all went through on September 30th. Spend yeah. money or it's gone, so let's buy a bunch of toilets. Well, yeah. Um, but so why shouldn't, um, I mean, who's to dictate what's... what's we are. The Who's people, we? Okay. Yeah, the people are, and there's there's nothing wrong with it if they can justify it. And what I want to know is, number one, where'd the money come from, how much, and what did you spend it on? Secondly is, now justify why you need the tank. It could be that the police in Chicago right now need a tank. Okay. If they can justify it, that's fine. But that doesn't happen. It's like the, mm -hmm. the, these governments, they make the decision for the people because they know what's best for the people instead of going to the people and saying, hey, hey, ladies and gentlemen, we need this. There's a war going on in the streets of Chicago. We need whatever, and the government's given us this money. Are you okay with this? Uh, and that's, it's part of that whole secrecy thing. Let us know, let the people decide. There's always gonna be uh, those that are for and against, but have the debate, and if you need it, and you can justify it, go for it. Becky, a couple questions I have. First of all, in the application process, so let's say Bellevue applied for one of these grants, in that grant, do they need to identify what they're gonna spend the money for, or do they get the money and then decide? What's they, they ha when it's an RFP, okay. and so when they write it, they have to write, they're asking for something in, in okay. specific. Okay, so the government already knows 
what they're asking for, mm -hmm. to, to purchase. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically, if they say yes, then the federal government saying you need that. Well, they go by what you tell them. Yes. Okay, so if, if Pavilion, La, Pavilion La Vista says, hey, we need a tank, and the government says, okay, here's your money for it, is the federal government saying that Papillion La Vista needs a tank? No, Papillion La Vista is. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the federal government approved it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but that's like anything with any, with Homeland Security getting a, a however big a budget. If they don't if they don't dole out that money, they don't get that budget next time around. That that is and, they and, can't and justify right, that. Right. You know, and your so. RFP really you know any any request request for proposal spells out why you need it mm -hmm. and what are you going to use it for. And you know, it's got all of those kind built into a grant. Anybody who writes grants knows that you have to put in the meat in terms mm -hmm. of your budget and what is it gonna do, what is the outcome, what is it you hope to accomplish having X, Y, or Z. So it's like, built you know, into there. Here's one of the problems with federal grants. If I'm a state or a locality, I can apply for this grant and here is why I need it. That's the explanation. Right. But most federal grants, there's always a loophole that says that if once you get the money and your circumstances change, then you don't don't need to reapply or come back through the Homeland Security to reapprove it for something else. If, if you can, if you can basically at a local level verify or justify that you need something else to spend this money on, you can do that. And I think as as these results coming in from the FOIA request, you're going to see a lot of that. And they're going to sit back and say, we use the loophole, and it's going to probably be all legal. And, and and I tell you, I had a conversation last weekend when someone said, well, well, we should do this. Uh, and I said, well, no, it's not a law, it's not the rule, but it should be, they should have to, if there's not a law, if they're not bringing the law, then what they're doing is fine. And as I think we all agree, there are loopholes everywhere, and that's not federal government, but that's state government and, and local government as well. Uh, but the other question I, I had for you, because you mentioned Uzis, and I'm thinking about some of the weapons and firearms that some of these people are carrying nowadays, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with you know, 100 round clips, or you know, with Bushmaster 223s, shouldn't shouldn't our police officers have something to match that? I'm sorry, a nine millimeter uh, with a 10 round magazine will not come do anything compared to a, a Bushmaster with an expanded clip that has 50 rounds in it. I'm so, so glad the ACLU doesn't take any stand on <laughs> gun control. Well, right well, it's, but, but Levi, I mean, because you mentioned we're militarizing the police. Sure. But aren't they only militarizing because they're facing a military? No, not at all. You're not, you're not allowed. Well, I suppose if you, if you're, a, I can't remember what the level is for a gun permit owner, you can go out and get yourself like a grenade launcher or something absolutely ridiculous if you're one of those high-class collectors or whatever. Mm -hmm. But unless you're involved in high crime, you're not getting your hands on that type of equipment. Sure, you're getting your AR-15s, you may be getting your rifles or whatever, but for the most but part... an AR-15 with a 30-round clip is better than a service revolver. Sure, absolutely. It, it can't go, a service revolver can't come up against that. Sure, absolutely, but your police SWAT units also have their AR-15s, and they can get called in, and they can have them too. I mean, police officers, they have their bulletproof vests. I mean, very rarely are they going to go up against somebody with armor piercing rounds those are usually pretty hard to get your hands on unless you're getting it through illegal means you know but as soon as someone does then I think the question is going to be why didn't the police have the right vest? well they have well on the border mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean border patrol agents Campion and Ramos abs absolutely I'm all for arming the police if they need it and it's justified it goes back to um, but then it also goes back to citizen overview yep and that's really what all this boils down to all these programs boil down to is the citizens have the right to review and approve the policies we are the country and if that kind and if that that police force has it that's fine and they have responsible roles in place but they're you know like the auditor for the police department the Omaha Police Department I'm a firm believer in those type of programs for oversight public oversight of public institutions. You have to have transparency absolutely and accountability in any program that you provide I mean you have to be able to be transparent to the voters and, to and, the and, what, and what we're saying here and I think everyone's saying that whether it be the Pfizer court whether it be the NSA programs multitude of programs and probably a whole lot we don't even know about yet that is probably the key thing that's missing in all those things is any kind of oversight whether it be congressional because we just said 
you know, even Congress says, you say we have oversight. No, we don't, because we don't know what's going on. Uh, and the FISA court seems to be nothing but a rubber stamp. I mean, wouldn't we all agree with that? Oh, yeah. Whether actual or perceived, that's mm -hmm. the problem with these, is, is secrecy breeds the conspiracy. Yep. And, and if there's no transparency or oversight, you're always going to have the lack of integrity in the system. And then the whole thing crumbles. It just, it just does. All right. So when we come back, we've got one more second. What we're going to talk about when we come back is, okay, this is where we are. Where do we go from here? Because there seems to be a lot of uproar, but I'm I'm a little bit worried that there'll be uproar for uproar for a while, and then the Americans have a very short attention span. So we're going to talk about where do we go from here? How can we have more accountability, or are we just going to have to live with all this when we come right back? Missy! The Boys and Girls Club of the Midden. Have been helping kids like me. Like me. Like us. With just $30 a year, I can get a healthy meal. Homework help. Exercise. A safe place to stay after school every day. At one of our eight clubs. My name is Janelle. And I am the Boys and Girls Club. The Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> Like us on Facebook at BGC Midlands. Cox will donate one dollar to the Boys and Girls Club. Hey, welcome back to Viewpoint. Uh, we've had a great conversation, and we're kind of in the point where we've talked about the issues. So now we need to talk about. I'm gonna start with Paul. You know, we've talked about how there's no accountability. We've talked about their secrecy. We've talked about this has been going on for whole decades. Mm -hmm. So what needs to happen? I mean, how are we going to change this? Or are we just going to have to sit on our hands and, and suffer through it? Yeah, wow, that could be a whole show in and of itself. That's next but week. I, I, I've always been the eternal optimist. This time I am with an asterisk. This is going to be interesting where this all goes, depending on a lot of factors, including how much more comes out. Is there? Are we going to start learning about specific people that the NSA maybe was gathering data on illegally and that comes out? It really boils down to what are the people going to do? And you talked about a short-term memory. They do, but if all these things continue to go on, uh, then you get more and more the IRS incidents happening and more wiretapping. Who knows? If the media gets on board with it, that they're going to determine the agenda. In the end, the people are going to be the one that has to demand accountability because I don't know that our politicians are. I, you know, I, I, personally, I'm all about accountability. If I was a congressman, I'd be questioning my leadership, going, why isn't Eric Holder being a, impeached right now? I mean, seriously. Or are they just playing politics for the next upcoming elections? These are all the moving parts. Where it ends up, I don't think anybody knows. It's kind of a dangerous time in many respects. You know, I, I, I go back to when, when um, Sandy Hook happened mm -hmm. and all those little kids. I thought, um, this is it, mm -hmm. finally. You know, um, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm a pro gun. I'm a concealed carry permit holder, all that. But my issue is magazine size, and that was the same instance at that. It was was large capacity. And I'm thinking, finally, something's going to happen. And for a while there, we thought something was going to happen, and then we just kind of got used to it. I mean, is that is that? Becky, do you think that's where we're, well, we're going to get to? I, I mean, I, I hear a lot of frustration, my cell bills, but we've, we've done the cell phone thing once before. Well, and ACLU National has filed suit against the federal government. Where do you think that's going to go? We are going, we're suing the federal government for transparency and accountability at the FISA court level. That there needs to be warrants, there needs to be accountability yeah. in terms of who's data is being reviewed and whose isn't. So, you know, where does that end up? It's anybody's guess. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be dismissed? Is it going to be heard? I have no idea. We just filed. Um, I'm kind of a optimist, but I'm not. Our attention span is very short. We've had all kinds of things happening quickly. Um, people move from issue to issue. Um, the Supreme Court does this, the Supreme Court does that. We have affirmative action, we have DOMA, we have all of these things going on that takes your interest and your attention away from things. So I'm not sure. I think um, it's going to take another incident. I mean, it's interesting that the person who revealed all this. Yeah, are you talking about an incident of, of revelation or are you talking about an incident of terrorism? No. You're talking about instant of revelation. Revelation. Okay. I mean, it was interesting that it was a contractor, mm -hmm. you know, who had access. And you're talking about uh, Snowden. 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 Who had access. Now there's talk about, oh, they're going to, you know, charge the reporter. 
Right. I From mean, the Guardian. The Guardian. Right. I mean, it's so, it's, I think. Which that, breeds the cover up. I know. You and know? there, if, if he was a contractor and had that information, there is probably uh, 500 more contractors with that kind of information. This is the tip of the iceberg. And I think we're going to be seeing more people coming forward and going, I know more information. Let me tell you about what I know. All right, Lee. Becky, would you agree that it, the media has the, is going to play the determining factor? If the media continues t to go with these stories and continues, yeah. this is going to drag out. And I think there will be some knee-jerk reactions and some, some changes and things. But if the media drops it and they move on to other stuff, it's done. Well, well, Lee, let me ask you. You know, we, Paul brings up a, a good point. The media kind of drives society sure. in today because we're 24-hour news cables, mm -hmm. news stations and everything. But... You know, what I miss, and of course I didn't grow up in the 60s, but the last time I saw... Oh, you, I feel so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was close. <laughs> uh, but, you know, back then, you know, we had hundreds of thousands of people coming together and protesting, mm -hmm. whether it be, it was, you know, the Vietnam War, it was, you know, civil rights, it was, I mean, I haven't seen any of that in decades. You know, people point, oh, what about the occupiers? Okay, first of all, there wasn't that many of them, yep. and pretty soon they all got tired because they've got other things to do. Yep. I don't think that we as Americans have that passion, good, good, good word, passion anymore, because I think we're so involved with, you know, putting food on the table, job, family, all these other things. They they are they are disen people are disengaged from the political process. I mean, I think in Sarpy County we only had. Twenty some percent, twenty five percent voter turnout. And, the last and, and, and I said that it's really the minority that elects everyone. Yep. It is a minority, whether you talk about national, <coughs> federal, state, local, it's always the minority that is picking who the next leadership is. I'm sorry, go ahead though. And the, well, it, it's really going to take something that either hits people's wallets or it hits a moral outrage within people. I mean, the civil rights movement was a moral outrage. I mean, you see it sort of similar with the with the same-sex marriage stuff now. It's more of a moral outrage. Why aren't these people equal? Why are they, you know, why, you know, I don't believe in that, whatever. And so it's, it, those things that morally get into people, they will sometimes get off their couch and stop watching TV and get, actually get out there and, and protest stuff. Um, but until we have something that actually affects people where they can see it actually affecting them personally, I don't think you're going to see anything where people get out and they get engaged. So Paul, what's it going to take? I mean, I, mean, I, I, I agree the media is going to, but I can't think that the media will carry this yeah. load for us. It, it's going to take something. What that is, I don't know, but it's going to take something where it brings the people together to say, we're Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, Atheists, whatever, and we want this. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the two parties have done a nice job in the last four years. They found that it's safer that in any incident, if it's your guy or gal, and you circle the wagons, your safety individually, as a politician in any state, at any level, is to circle the wagons and be on board. And it does work. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not going to go outside of that, irregardless of what the public opinion polls say, unless it's really dramatic. And that's why I say there's going to have to be something. And then the people unite and say, whatever it is you're going to do, or you're all fired, or we're going to do constitutional amendments or, or something. And that's why I got involved with the party, I mean, mm -hmm. for the most part. For a long time, I was, I was registered as an independent just because I thought it didn't matter. And I, you know, I figured out that there was actually a local political process that I could get involved in because all politics starts local. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at Congressman Terry, he was city council before he was congressman. You know, I mean, you, you get people into local office who, event, you know, your dog catcher becomes, you know, mayor who may go on to be a state representative and then maybe they're in Congress or president or whatever. And well, so, I want to give the young lady on our yeah, panel absolutely. the last word before we got to go. Since I'm the one who lived through the 60s. <laughs> um, well, I was going to say 80s, okay. but, you know. You know, and, and, and I think that you're right. I mean, we have, for someone who has been through those major events, mm -hmm. I am still fighting some battle. You know, I fought for, you know, there was the Vietnam, there was the civil rights, there was the equal rights, there's, there's immigration, there's um, reproductive choice. I mean, I have continually fought some type of a battle. 
And it's, you know, what you have to do is you have to hand it off to the next generation. Right. And hopefully they'll pick it up, though. And hopefully they'll pick it up. Do you think, it aren't, well, actually, the next generation, do you think they're a little lazy? Yes. Well, that, that's going to have to be, unfortunately, our last word for today. <laughs> As I said, we've had a great panel. I want to thank Becky and Levi and Paul for their participation. I do want to say this. We actually tried to find somebody, and we worked about three weeks, to find someone that was, this is absolutely necessary for protect us from terrorism and all that. No one. No one. I mean, and I think what we found here today is you know, a strange bed of fellows. We have an ACLU executive director, we have a Republican uh, Republican libertarian, and then we have a very uh, a, another conservative Republican. And we are all saying basically the same thing, mm -hmm. right. that there is something that's not right with this situation. So I want to thank them. We've had a great show. I want to thank you guys for show, for being here. I'll be back with my two cents, and then we'll have to wrap up the show. But thank you guys for coming. Thank, thank, you, you, very thank you very much. I'll be right back. Do you know about 211? It's help for an elderly relative or a troubled teen, family counseling, or job training. Instead of hunting for phone numbers, dial 211. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, talk to someone who will find the local information you need. United Way and its statewide partners want you to get connected and get answers. Dial 211 or go online at ne211.org. You know, we've had a great discussion today on, a, on an issue that uh, it's become more and more important. It's about privacy. You know, we said earlier today that there's nothing in the Constitution that guarantees privacy for anything. Now we can protect ourselves against unlawful seizures, warrants, things like that. But it seems as though even those things are becoming faded and misinterpreted. You have a FISA court that is in secret and no one knows who the defendants are and then the defendants can't even defend themselves. But you know what though? I think we actually have to take some responsibility for that. Think about all the different ways we give out our information freely. We sign up for emails, accounts. We sign surveys. Uh, when we're at the fair, we you know sign this and be eligible to win a new jacuzzi. We give our give away our information so freely that how can we blame anybody else? Let me give you an example. On my key ring, I have three saver cards. I have one from High B, from Bakers, and I have an Office Depot one. They know everything that I buy. Now they say that they're using so they can gear things to the things that I like. They look at my purchase history, but is that the only place that information is going? So we have to look at ourselves and our own actions. We have to defend ourselves. Because if we don't, obviously, as we've talked about tonight, no one else will. So the important thing is, we have to defend ourselves. We have to defend our family. Because no one else is gonna do it, and we've proven ourselves, is terrorism a reason to do what the government's doing? That's our show tonight. We wanna thank you for coming. Make sure you check us out on Facebook at Viewpoint. Follow us on Twitter at Viewpoint TV, and always check out our website at any-viewpoint.org. We'll see you next time, and we'll be talking about another hot topic, immigration. We'll see you soon.